Hi everybody, welcome to Monday afternoon. This is Q&A with Coach Rebecca and I am here to answer any questions that you guys have live on Facebook and um, also to answer some questions I got from members of the Perform Happy community um, so that I can help you guys along your sport journey. I am part of a team of coaches. There are a fab five of us who specialize in things like fear and anxiety in all sorts of sports, gymnastics, baseball. Um, we've got uh, collegiate baseball players on the team. We've got pro soccer player. We've got elite gymnast, collegiate gymnast, um, lacrosse coach and specialist, football players, wrestlers. So we've expanded beyond just my um, insane passion for gymnastics into this really cool group of coaches who are very, very qualified to help you or your child with whatever is keeping you from being happy, healthy, and successful in your sport. So uh, we do that in two ways. Of course, there's the Perform Happy community, which is the virtual training center. You can find information at performhappy.com on all of the virtual courses. Hi, Tina. Uh, and then the other way is one-on-one. -on -one. You can book a free consultation with any of us at completeperformancecoaching.com slash schedule. And that will, um, it'll give you a taste of what we have to offer and if we might be a good fit for working with you or your kid. So with that said, let's dive into our first question. Now the theme is motivation today. Um, and I'll just read a couple of these questions and then I'll give you kind of a general answer to both. So one person who's a gymnast parent said that their biggest problem right now is keeping her daughter excited and motivated to go to practice. She says, we switched gyms and she's having a very tough time adjusting to a much tougher coaching style. I want to help her better handle the practices so she's happy to go to the gym again. Um, hi, Avery. Um, it's nice to see some people tuning in live. Okay, so that's uh, when you've got tough coaches, it can be really hard. When you've got anybody who's kind of riding you and not cheerleading for you, but more just pointing out the negatives, it can like it, you can lose motivation and it's not as fun. So that's the first question is how to help her daughter be happy on the way to practice and actually want to go. And then the next question is from a swim parent. And she said that she's been backing off talking to her son about swimming. She's relaxed with other expectations also. We've been working with her on just kind of not needing to push so hard because that can be, you know, it can be something that actually unmotivates your, well, anyone who has a teenager, you probably know. If you push them, they will push back and they will do less. If you want them to do more, they will do less. If you don't care, then they'll they'll do probably more. So that pushing less is almost always more motivating, strangely enough. Um, and she says, where do I go from here? He's receptive when we talk about expectations with swimming. There aren't any goals right now and motivation, I would say, is low. What can I do to help him along? Okay, so that's a big clue. There aren't any goals right now. Now, if you think about what motivates you, I am very goal oriented. I know not everybody is, but I like to have something I'm aiming for because there, are, you know, let's face it. I have my dream job and there are days when I'm like, oh, I don't feel like it. You know, like I couldn't have a better situation, but there are still days where I'm like, I'm tired or I just want to, you know, whatever. We all get there. Even doing the sport that you totally love, you're going to have days where you just don't feel like it. So here, I'm going to give you guys some tips. Uh, I'll let you know a little bit about why that happens, why the motivation drops, and then some things that you can do to make it better. And if you want, I have a whole kind of cheat sheet of 101 ways to just keep swimming, my little Finding Dory reference. And it's based on motivating swimmers. I've done a lot of work with swimmers over the years, but it, it applies to anything. So feel free to, you know, grab that download. Um, it's at completeperformancecoaching.com slash motivation. And that will help you um, just to have some ideas, like a ton of different ideas of what you can do. Okay, so why do people lose motivation? Here are the main things. Not having fun, number one. Number two, fear of failure. You don't want to, you don't want to put your emotional, you know, like you don't want to take emotional risks every single day unless you've got something you're aiming for that feels bigger and better and worth it. Okay. Then there's fear of success. And now for anyone who is a little bit overwhelmed by pressure, you might find that you're like, oh my gosh, if I do well, 
then I'm going to be expected to keep doing well, and that's too much pressure. Oh my gosh, I just want to kind of stay the same so I don't get stuck doing the same thing over and over, you know, or like keeping, continuing people expect more and expect more, and then I'm scared and they expect more and then I'm scared. So those two fears can really get you success and failure. Unmet needs is another thing that takes motivation down. If you need some positive feedback and you are not getting any from your coach, then you have to get it from somewhere. You have to get it from your teammates, from your parents, from yourself. Because that's part of our needs is we need to feel validated. We need to feel like what we're doing is okay. We need to feel like we belong. You know, if you're feeling kind of alienated by people on your team, then that will make a big difference in your enjoyment factor and your motivation. If you if you feel like an outcast who doesn't have friends, whose coaches mean to them, yeah, I wouldn't want to go either. And then the other one is monotony of training. Sometimes coaches get into ruts and they do the same thing over and over and over and over. And sometimes you got to mix it up in your own mind if it's not being mixed up in reality. Okay, so those are the reasons why people really start to lose motivation. There are more than just those five, but those are those are the kind of the big ones. And here, so I'm going to give you tips for athletes first and then for parents second. Because, you know, I don't want to give you, like, this is what you should do, athletes. And the, and the parents are like, okay, kids, you got to do this and this and this. Because... The athlete has to do it themselves. Motivation has got to come from within. And then parents will give you a separate set of tips. So tips for athletes. Goals. Set goals. Have something you're aiming toward. Have something you're excited about. Have something that you're going to, you know, I like to do 90-day goals. You guys might know that about me. I like, I like to know three months from now, I can set a pretty big goal. I can make a lot happen in three months, and I bet you can too. If you think about just like today or this week, it's not as exciting as if you're like, well, three months from now, I could have a lot of things going. And then you break it down and you realize like, all right, I got to get to work if I'm going to get that in three months. So I have a 90 day vision planner for anyone who's in the community that you guys can grab a copy of. Um, and otherwise you can feel free to email me, Rebecca at performhappy.com and ask me for that. I'll give you that too. Um, so set goals. Big goal, three months. That's like as big as you really need to go for now for the purposes of this. And then you can, then you break it down into monthly, weekly, daily. What am I going to do today? And then you do that and then it feels good. And then you want to go back and, you know, set another one and get it. And everyone in the Perform Happy community, I ask you guys to set goals every week so that then I can see them. I can give you feedback. I can help you along. And I can also go, "Hmm, let's get more specific or I don't know, that seems really huge or you know, I, I like to help you guys along to make sure that they're really effective goals. Okay, then um, positive self-talk. So if your coach is being mean, you have to be really nice to yourself, which I know is very, it's a, it can definitely be a tall order. Be nice to yourself um, the best you can. And one of the best ways I like to do this is actually have you keep a journal of everything negative that you're saying to yourself. And once you start to see what you're saying to yourself, you might go, oh my gosh, like that's not nice at all. And then come up with new things to say to yourself instead in those moments, things that are true, things that are kind, things that you would say to a good friend and not things you would say to, like you probably wouldn't even say to your worst enemy what you say to yourself when you're feeling down. It's crazy how, how easy it is to be negative to ourselves. Um, then another tip is to change up your training routine. I know it's not always within your control because obviously the coach is in charge of practice. That's why you pay them the big bucks to do that. But see if there's things you can do, like play a little game with yourself, personal best of the day on this event or on this, you know, like today I'm going to try to get 10 in a row or I'm going to try to get better every time. Have it be different so it's not just like you show up, same assignment, oh, I'm failing here, negative self-talk here. Do something different. Make a commitment. And now here you're going to have to set yourself a reminder because you're not gonna to remember to do something different. You're gonna walk in and you're gonna start practice the way you always do it. So like put a sticker on your water bottle, put a wristband on, write, a, write something on your hand, set an alarm on your phone, whatever you need to do, come up with something silly that can be fun for you, that'll be a little different and then figure out a way to remind yourself. Um, now, also, I like, I like things like a vision board. So I have up above my computer, this big, beautiful collage of words and images. And every time I look at it, I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Whew, this is what I'm creating. You know, so I, I love when kids create them for themselves or adults too, where you basically pull out some magazines and you just rip out anything that calls to you. Any image that kind of like speaks to your soul, you don't have to know why. 
and you just rip it out and you put it in a pile and then you go back through and you cut out the little parts that you really like and you put them together on a board and then you put it up in front of you and you're like, whoa, I had no idea that I really wanted an Airstream trailer until that call to me. And then I'm like, okay, let's see if I can make that happen. And that can kind of like get you motivated. It can get you like, yeah, I don't feel like working right now, but, but darn it, I want my Airstream trailer. So I got to get to work. You know, whatever it is for you that like excites you is that, that little carrot that you can chase yourself. Um, and then another thing I like to do with groups is I actually will have them sit and close their eyes and visualize what, what it was like when they were really happy in their sport when they were super motivated and everything was going great and they were just in love with their sport. I'm sure everyone can kind of flash back to a time where things were good. Things were really good and you just loved it and you wanted to do it just because it was great. That's what you got to tap into and then ask yourself, why was I doing it then? What was my motivation? What was driving me? What got me on fire for this? You know, and I always, always get brought back to this 12 year old image of me being a sports psychologist. When I was 12, I was like, that's what I want to be when I grow up. And when I would get like, oh, I don't, school's so hard. And oh my gosh, maybe I just want to like do something else. Like maybe I'll just coach gymnastics. I love that. But then that 12 year old in me was like, mm -mm, that's not, that's not what you want. And then I would get back on and be like, okay, stick with it. Get get through school. You're going to be okay. So those are some tips. I'll give you guys um, access to that download at completeperformancecoaching.com slash motivation. You get 101 tips. It's written for swimmers, but everybody can benefit. There's lots of good kind of like different ideas how you can mix things up. And, and then just and now, okay, yeah, we're going on to parents. Make sure parents that I say this, I feel like I say this every week, but I can't say it enough. Reward effort, not outcome. If your athlete thinks that only good outcomes count and mistakes are bad, they're going to have a lot on a lot at stake every time they walk into the gym or dive into that pool. They're going to feel like I could fail and that is not okay. So what you have to reinforce for them is that effort is what counts. You showed up and you tried. I don't care if you didn't get the best time. I don't care if you didn't get a single medal. You've been working hard and I know that you're trying and I am so proud of you. Let's go get ice cream. Can't say that enough. Praise effort. Okay, then let's see what else. Um, help them see the big picture. I, I always bring it back to Michael Phelps who, you know, if he would have made an overly big deal about his first Olympics, he might not have done so well. So if you can think of it like his first Olympics was just practice for the second Olympics, which was practice for the third and practice for the fourth. Not everybody's going to get four Olympics, but... What if you approached every meet like practice? This is just a chance to practice competing. See what happens. See what I can learn about myself. If I make a mistake, then my opportunity is to learn from it. And if I learn from it, then that failure becomes an asset. Failures and successes are both these really valuable tools that help you get your goals. And if you don't have goals, then you're not going to be really like willing to rethink failure. Have goals rethink failure. Let your kids fail. That's, a, that's one of my actual things on here. Um, let them make mistakes. Embrace imperfection. You know, a lot of you guys are probably athletes yourself who are like, but I wasn't supposed to make mistakes and I didn't get to be imperfect. Well, I know. Let, let your kid be imperfect. Let them make mistakes. Let them not win. Let them, that's going to light a fire under their butt way better than you saying, you know, you really should practice. Um, okay, Alexander saying, I agree with what you say. However, it's very, very hard when coaches constantly are downers and say things like, oh, that's all I can see on my iPad here. But um, yeah, so coaches are, can be a major demotivator. And, and I talk to like little eight-year-old sweetie pies whose coaches are saying the most awful things to them. And it is hard to be eight years old and to be able to look at an adult who you respect and trust and really want them to appreciate and love you, it is so hard to look at somebody like that. Okay, um, and okay, when, when your coaches are downers and say things like, that was bad, what's wrong with you, that's an eight. <sighs> okay, so these, so these little sweetie pie eight-year-olds, they need to learn that their coach is trying the best they can to get, to get you motivated, and, and what you need to listen for is what's gonna help you. 
and you, what you need to let go of is what makes it feel impossible and makes it feel like you're not okay. So if your coach says, you know, um, that was not okay, what's wrong with you? If you can't get your arm straight, then you're going to get an eight. And <clears throat> so if you, if you can focus in on, okay, what are the things that are useful in that sentence from the coach? And what things make it impossible? The only thing you would actually let in is get your arms straight. You would let the rest of it go because that's their stuff. It doesn't feel good to be mean. So you can just feel bad for them and go, oh, you poor coach. It doesn't feel good to be mean. I'm going to get my arms straight. I'm going to do my best. And then you as parents can go, yeah, coach said it seemed like they were being a little bit mean. And you were working hard and keep working on those arms and you're going to get it. And yeah, that, and I'm a big fan of communication. Like, hey, that's not really okay to say to my kid. Can we work on that? Can we work on how that's phrased? It's not motivating. It's really, she's having trouble getting to practice because she doesn't want to get yelled at. Can you, can you do your best to limit the sarcasm? I mean, it's not always, you know, coaches can have egos and maybe that won't work. But if you teach your kid to have a filter, let in the stuff that's helpful. Don't let in the stuff that isn't. And then if it gets bad enough, consider other gyms. Um, okay, and then last one is have meaningful conversations. Listen, don't go in with like, here's what I want you to do, or here's what I want you to understand. It's, how are you doing? Talk to me. It seems like you're having a hard time going to practice. What can I help you with? What were you, what was going on before that was allowing you to have fun that isn't happening now? Oh, your friends have switched gyms. Okay, can we, why don't we have some other friends over for a sleepover so that you can get to know them? Figure out what you can do when, within your control and then just give them a neutral ear. And maybe they just want you to back off and they want to just have a mellow year and they don't want to have to try so hard. And that could be devastating for some of you parents who are like, but you need that scholarship. Let them, let them learn. You know, then they don't get their times and then I promise you, give it enough time and let them be the master of their own sport. Of course, you, you make them keep going to practice. It, it's not like they get to just not go, like go whenever they feel like it. If they made a commitment, they follow through. Um, okay, Alexandra says, true, but hard to believe that coach will change and be nice after I will talk about how her words have a negative impact. It, they might not change, but we, I like to look at what's within your control. You can control the way you speak to them. You can control what you ask. You can control communication. You can control how you react to what they say. You can't control them. So they might not change. That's definitely true. And you have to talk to your kid about, they might not change. This might not ever be different and it's not your fault. This is them. So what, what can we do to try to filter out that bad stuff that's not useful, that's not helpful, that isn't helping you to be a better gymnast and just let it go. You can even like write it on a piece of paper, crumble it up and toss it, like physically let it go. And just go, that is no longer going to plant in my head, only the, just the, just the corrections. You know, you can't change the coaches, unfortunately. So go ahead and grab that freebie, completeperformancecoaching.com slash motivation. You can download that for free. And if you guys have any questions for me or any of the other Complete Performance Coaches, please reach out. At, um, you can do Rebecca at performhappy.com, or you can find us on the Complete Performance Facebook page where we all do live sessions kind of here and there. And you can find me every week, Mondays at 4.30. All right, you guys, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next week. Bye.